गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबडी आई एम डॉक्टर मोहित भंडारी आई एम अ बेरियाट्रिक मेटाबॉलिक एंड रोबोटिक सर्जन बेस्ड आउट ऑफ इंदौर एंड टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द मिनी गैस्ट्रिक बाईपास इन दिस स्पेशल सेशन ऑर्गनाइजिंग ऑर्गनाइज बाय द सेजेस इन द इमर्जिंग बेरियाट्रिक सेक्शन एट द आउटसेट let me thank the executive committee of sages to have given me this opportunity to present my data and our experience of mini gastric bypass as one of the important procedures which is emerging in bariatric surgery across the world let me start with my presentation so i bring greetings from indore the top picture is the campus where we work uh, we are associated with the same medical school in the extreme left is our animal lab and down here uh, this is the training center this is the bariatric surgery center where we work uh, i have performed close to 5000 mini gastric bypasses but i have performed equal number of gastric bypasses and sleeves so there is no particular affinity towards one of these procedures therefore my views which will be expressed in the presentation will have to be independent these are my disclosures and one of the most important disclosure is that i work with professor mathias phobi who is the founding president of bariatric corporation and also a clinical advisor to me but this association does not have any bearing on my lecture we know that mini gastric bypass is being practiced across the world in larger numbers except for united states of america where the numbers are less numbers in asia western part of the europe and middle east are ever growing there is always a tendency to reject new theories when they contradict the established practices or understanding and that is what we called as the similvis reflex dr phobi says that paradigm changing ideas are always met with derision and the proponents of those ideas are there to face the music let me take you back towards the history where it was observed that gastrectomy led to weight loss and inability to regain that weight when it was performed for two one of the most common pathologies when surgeons used to deal with it in 1967 and those were the ulcers and the cancers and that led to the birth of gastric bypass operation similarly an effort to simplify the laparoscopic gastric bypass operation led to the rebirth of modified loop gastric bypass or a single anastomosis gastric bypass which was named as mini gastric bypass by professor rutledge in 1997 the procedure was marred by controversy but has some merits let me put a very balanced view of the procedure the surgical procedure of mini gastric bypass is a long vertical tube 12 to 20 cm and there is a loop gastrojejunal anastomosis it's a single anastomosis which is very wide around 4.5 to 6 cm it's a wide pouch it's non restrictive and there is a long bpilm of around 150 cm and it ranges from 150 to 300 cm so this is how it looks like a low lying gastroenterostomy 3 to 5 cm wide 
very easy to perform no tension on the anastomosis like we have in some of our conventional ruvai gastric bypasses the experience with one anastomosis gastric bypass or mini gastric bypass starts from rutledge who published the first series with a 6 year study of 2400 patients in obesity surgery in 2005 then to chevelier musela vijay lee dr kular from india our own country to wang and then there have been innumerable number of publications to have established the efficacy of the procedure the experience with mini gastric bypass have explained that over several thousands of these procedures have been performed over 15 years it's a easier procedure to perform safer and faster than the ruen y but the bilio pancreatic reflux inside the gastric pouch is a big controversy which most surgeons in united states are concerned and this is a very very particular concern which surgeons have expressed across the world if we talk about the other achilles heel of mini gastric bypass or the one anastomosis gastric bypass we often find that most publications have established that there are more nutritional deficiencies in terms of proteins iron vitamins in almost all the case series published for mini gastric bypass this paper expressed a 21.4% of a nutritional deficiency we also find another problem with mini gastric bypass that's the marginal ulcers kamal rutledge vijay lee and wang have published the marginal ulcer rate ranging from 2.8% to 0.6% but they are not more than a gastric bypass in most of these published series or meta analysis the bile reflux the marginal ulcers the protein and micronutrient deficiencies are all problems which exists with mini gastric bypass much more than the ruvai gastric bypass the bile reflux after oagb mgb is around 2% in one series and around 3.7% in the other series but the consequences of these bile reflux when they touch the lower end of the esophagus causing changes in the lower esophageal mucosa causing metaplasia and maybe cancers is not well established if we talk about the malignancies a single case report of malignancies after a mini gastric bypass in the remnant stomach 9 years after the surgery has been reported and total 7 cases of gastric cancers have been reported in all different kinds of bypasses in a gap of 1 to 22 years so these malignancies two cases there are more cases which have been reported after a mini gastric bypass are not actually more than what has been reported then after a sleeve or a conventional ruen y gastric bypass let's talk about the efficacy of this procedure this procedure is very efficacious when we have compared the procedure with rygb or a sleeve the weight loss is always more in a mini gastric bypass when we have compared this in terms of the diabetes resolution or the other comorbidities resolution again mini gastric bypass scores over sleeve and a bypass in most of the series which have been published so much so that type 2 diabetes in most studies have a statistically significant and better resolution this particular study also determines the quality of life after a mini gastric bypass and most patients have reported fantastic quality of life better than or ruen y gastric bypass the major complications of ruen y gastric bypass were higher 3.2% versus 1.8% for a mini gastric bypass so in terms of comorbidity resolution including type 2 diabetes weight loss and quality of life mini gastric bypass proves to be an excellent operation what we know till now about OGB or MGB after so many different studies performed and thousands of these procedures performed 
We understand that it's a simple procedure. It has a shorter operating time. It has a low operating risk. It's easier to reverse. There are many options to do a re-intervention when there is a complication. It has a very low incidence of internal hernia. We cannot say that in mini bypass there is no internal hernia. When there is a Peterson's defect with a pouch gastroenterostomy in a gastric bypass, logically there will be a Peterson's defect even in a mini gastric bypass. And there have been two or three case reports of internal hernia. But having said that, the rate of internal hernia is very, very less as reported by a mini gastric bypass. The weight loss is at par, if not better than a Ruavai or a sleeve. The resolution of comorbidities is either better or at par with Ruavai or a sleeve. There's a very, very, very high patient satisfaction. And there are fewer complications. So if I want to take you to my own data, because I expressed that we performed around close to 5,000 mini bypasses at our center. We compared the two most important modifications of a Ruvai gastric bypass. The first modification which Professor Phoebe did, a banded gastric bypass, and the second which Professor Rutledge did, the mini gastric bypass. And when we compared at four years, the mini bypass had slightly better weight loss than the banded bypass. If we see in our data, there was a 7.48% difference in terms of the excess body percentage weight loss. When we compared the mini bypass with a banded bypass and a Ruavai, we find that at four years, as you can see in the slide, there is 80% of excess weight loss with OAGB, 67 with conventional bypass and 74 with banded bypass. So weight loss is definitely better with a mini bypass. Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And we see that surgeons have started to believe that compartmentalization of intestines is not something which is worth it. Therefore, what Professor Rutledge did is being followed by several others in the form of saggy, saddy, sassy, or a loop DJB. And I think that they all believe that a loop anastomosis is going to be the future of a bypass operation. So this was the first meeting where I was on the expert panel with the if so OAGB MGB consensus in Hamburg in July 2019. And you can see we were a bunch of friends and experts. And we dealt with all the problems which we were facing after a mini bypass in Hamburg came up with some consensus on how to solve these problems and move ahead and make this procedure much more safer and standardized for surgeons and colleagues to follow. The conclusion, what I have for you is that OAGB MGB with a 150 centimeters of a BP limb in patients with no prior history of GERD or endoscopic findings of GERD is a simpler and easier laparoscopic operation than Ruovi or sleeve. So what I mean to say is, let's not be very aggressive on the limb lens if we stick to around 150 and we consider patients who does not have GERD or findings on endoscopy and who can do a good follow-up, this is a safer procedure to perform. We have to judiciously choose it. It's not that you have mini bypass as some gospel truth for all patients, but for select group of patients chosen judiciously and a conservative limb length, mini bypass can prove to be an effective operation. At the end, I conclude, OAGB is a standard bariatric procedure. OAGB will replace the RYGB as the standard for bariatric and metabolic operations in future. And OAGB can also replace even sleeves as one of the most common operation, but only in the situation where it is judiciously chosen. Thank you very much. This is my team from India. We have Professor Phoebe sitting there. We always say at the end of our presentation that at Indore in India, we offer various treatment modalities for obesity at a dedicated bariatric surgery center. The operation is determined by the profile of the patient 
and it is guided by the findings from the analysis of our prospectively collected database. Thank you very much to the SAGES Executive Committee to have, been, to have offered me this opportunity to speak on this topic.